Welcome to Live Edge, episode number next. I'm Matt. I'm Amy. Welcome to the show. On this episode, we're going to talk about some frequently asked questions that beginners ask. I'm going to try to answer those. If you have a question yourself, drop it in the comments or in the chat here, and we'll try to answer it the best we can. I don't know everything. I know very little, actually, but I will try to help you as much as I can. All right. So number one, uh, we're just going to jump right in. How do you price woodworking projects? That's one of the main questions I get multiple times a week. Like, how do you price this? How do you price that? And you, if you're on our Facebook community, you'll, you'll see that question quite a bit. What would you charge for this? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to price something, and there's no right answer here. But I'm going to give you kind of a basic guide that we've come up with. And, uh, well, we didn't come up with it. A lot of people use this, but I'm going to give you the... I can't even get in there. What's the matter? It won't let me in there. What's going on? You're just gone. All right, so... Uh-oh, wrong one. So this is in our um, Sawdust Startups community. If you don't know, we have a business building community called sawduststartups.com. Or it's called Sawdust Startups. But you can check it out at sawduststartups.com. But this is what a lot of people do is called a profit margin pricing example. So if you're trying to figure out what should I charge for a cutting board, we're just going to use a cutting board for an example. If you look here on the pricing guide, we've got $30 in maple, $40 in walnut, and then we're charging how much per hour that you're going to put your hourly rate in here. And then there's how much overhead you may have, which is glue, you know, things like that. The consumable sandpaper, et cetera electricity, you know, everything that goes into that. We got a total of $150. A lot of people will add a profit margin on top of what the actual product costs, which in here in this case, just a wild example, 40%. It's a good profit margin to have. In other words, we're adding 60 bucks to it. It's going to bring that to a $210 total for a cutting board. Now, this is just a, a random example. So a lot of people will take their product, whether that be an end table, coffee table, whatever you're making, and then add a percentage on top of it to make up a profit. And there's no right or wrong there. 40% is a good solid, obviously a good solid um, profit margin. But when you get into um, higher end pieces, if you add 40% onto something you've already spent a bunch of money on, then it, it really does jack their prices up. But it depends on what you're making and how to price those things. That's just a good general guide on how to price things. A lot of, uh, some people will do, cost times two times three times four and so whatever it costs and then you just x four times that or three times that but there's a bunch of different ways to price things my main thing i've always said is just be fair right you want to yep. price things fair you don't want to undersell yourself and price it to where you're not going to make money or if because if you're not making profit your business won't stay there so you just you need to make money but you also don't need to gouge people right you don't want to be doing that welcome to our two before supporter club jason grant welcome jason Glad to have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you don't want to you don't want to have such a low price that your price compared to others make your product seem like it's not going to be worthy. Mm -hmm. um, I've run into that myself looking on Etsy. I will not go towards something if it's twenty dollars and everybody else has it priced at one hundred and fifty up. There's a huge price difference there, so you don't want to underprice to the point, especially that it makes it look like it's not going to be worth it. But you don't want to make your whole year's worth of profit off of one customer. So <laughs> everybody got to make a living, but you ain't got to make it all off me. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and that, another question I get all the time is which which one should you buy first, jointer or the planer? Um, it depends on what you're making. I wish I had bought the jointer first. I got the planer first. The jointer would have been more beneficial to me to help flatten boards and get the edges straight. I had the hardest time figuring out how to get the edge of a board straight. What was that noise? That's me. Oh, uh, I said, I, I, I just, I could not get two pieces of wood to go together side to by side and be like tight fitting. I'd always have a gap here or there. And if I had just bought the joiner first versus the planer, I'd have been much better off. But it depends on what you're making. So uh, I had someone ask if today was his birthday, your birthday. Today is not country breakfast. That's his nickname, y'all. That's what Michelle Cochelle <laughs> on here said. Happy birthday. Uh, country breakfast or aka country Thanks. breakfast <laughs> that's the nickname he's trying to get you know i'm not doing as y'all are doing well, let's just we'll we'll just humor him a little bit <laughs> his birthday is saturday the 20th but we were no, talking about, jokes we were talking about his birthday on the members only so that's yeah. kind of how it got that's started how it got but started. yeah 
<laughs> uh, Mr. Clark says he takes the cost of material plus an average hour rate of $35 to $50 an hour based on the difficulty of the work piece. I like that. It's a good yep. product model. See, everybody's going to have their own thing. you mm -hmm. got to figure it out yourself, and that's kind of a bummer for people because they want a hard and fast rule mm -hmm. on what to price every piece of product. But it, it, it just you depends. You have to figure out what works for you. Because, like, if you take a birdhouse or, or something very simple, right, and you it costs you $10 or $15 to make it, and then you put a percentage on top of that, well, you may only make 25 You know, you may be only be selling that thing for 25 or $30, and you're not making any money where everybody else is selling the same thing that's $50, $60, 70 So it just depends on any market. Market value makes a difference too. Are you selling like crazy the product? Like we was making stove covers. They were selling like crazy, like crazy. I just couldn't keep up. What do you do? You raise price. You raise the price up a little bit. And that kind of kind of starts slowing the, the process down, but you're making more per product, so it makes up for that. Mm -hmm. So you just have to adapt and overcome a lot of times. Today is Brian Dole's birthday so Welcome, everybody Brian. give him some birthday love you can i can i can give him some confetti i forgot about somewhere that. where's it at right there right there that one yeah boom happy birthday happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> and lloyd says your name is mighty matt not country breakfast <laughs> <laughs> thank you lord that's, awesome. that's funny another oh big red i did i did look at your email i just have not had a chance to reach out to you and get all that set up We've had, it, it's, it's been, been a crazy week. It's been crazy, y'all, and it's only Tuesday. It feels like today is the fifth Monday of it the week. Suggest. So, thank you, Damon. Appreciate <laughs> you, man. Oh, thank you, Damon. Thank you. Did it go through? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, Backboard Media says, quick question. Should I have two separate zero clearance inserts, one for 45 and one for 90? Yes. Uh, because when you turn it to a 45, uh, it just, it cuts like a wider, longer cut and 90, obviously, straight up and down. So, yeah, it would be best to have two different inserts there. Uh, next question I get asked a lot is what software do you use to make woodworking plans or to sketch product ideas, et cetera? Most people use Google. I don't even know if it's Google SketchUp anymore, but it's called SketchUp. If you search Google SketchUp, you'll find it. There's a free version. I think there's a paid version. And then some people use Fusion 360. I've played around with that stuff. It's It takes me a little while to get my head wrapped around that this is a 3D model, like like you can take this and spin it in space, right? And it, it kind of gets confusing after a while. But once you, there's some, I think uh, Steve Ramsey has a very good series on Google SketchUp. You can literally search it on YouTube, Steve Ramsey, Google SketchUp, and go through a whole, a whole kind of a, basically a mini course on how to operate it. It's really good. Uh, Angel Knopp wants to know when we're coming to Houston. Do we know the exact date? We don't date? know the exact date, but it's September. September. As soon as we get the day, though, we'll post yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, tools and tailgates coming up. If you go to 731boards.com slash tools and tailgates, we have all the dates there for our um, festival. What are we calling that? Um, our, community gathering? Our gathering. Yeah. So tools and tailgates coming our up. Party. We party. We got one in Franklin, Tennessee on April 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's going to be axe throwing there, y'all. Um, we are also got uh, one in Kansas City on June 24th. Uh, but we don't have the exact location yet, but I will have that information coming soon, but it's all on that website. The Duke of Tank. I am I not sure. That. I love is, that name. <laughs> uh, yeah. is there a Patreon tag for YouTube? Uh, no, it's only channel membership tags. Uh, YouTube doesn't, YouTube and Patreon don't jive together, uh, but it's anybody that's in the Two Before Nation, uh, you get the free Two Before Nation sticker, you get Member only giveaways, member only live streams. It doesn't matter if you're on Patreon or channel membership. You Damon, get the exact same thing. For the one in Houston, I actually for all of them that we get to pick a day, if we get to pick, it will always be on a Saturday. Preferably Saturday. If we get to pick. So like the one in Kansas City, we're not getting to pick and it's on a Monday. So Yeah. Uh RNA says they are CNC in tonight and it is loud in the <laughs> shop. A bit. Right. But Damon, I need to see. Grand he sent me a bunch of pictures I got to show you. He sent me a bunch earlier. Video, too. And you ain't showing Oh, they were cute. Man, they were cute. I'll show them to you later. <laughs> Another question I get all the time is, Dang it. <laughs> how do you prevent rust on your table saws or other cast iron products like jointers, <laughs> band saws, etc.? cetera? Uh, there's some stuff. If you have rust on there, there's some products that are, it's called Sand Flex, I believe it is. Sand flakes. I'm almost certain it is. Little blocks of sandpaper. I think I have, I know I have a video on it, but it's like 
a coarse, medium, and fine grit. You take the coarse grit and like it just takes some elbow grease and it basically sands it off. And then you go to the medium and the fine and it really polishes up your top. And then you put on something to protect it. A lot of people use paste wax. That works well. I used uh, Bow Shield T9 on mine. That works well. Carbon method is out now. You can use that to prevent it. Uh, one thing that I did was added a dehumidifier to the shop and that helped immensely. Keep the door closed if you can. Add a dehumidifier and that keeps my humidity way down like 35% all the time. It may be 90% outside, but it's about 35% humidity inside and it makes it feel better in there because it's not sticky. Jay Reeves, no, his birthday is uh, Saturday the 20th. Saturday. Um, who was that? Oh, Tom Shaw. We do plan on coming to Vegas. I, I can't remember. Is Vegas this year or next year that we're... Uh, we haven't set a date yet. Uh, we, well, we'll be there, Lord willing, the next year, IWF. What do you call it? IWF. So it's next year. Yeah. What's the, it's not IWF. AW. It's a AWSF or something. Um, and then somebody asked about... Oh, Steve asked about making it to Phoenix. Um, this year, I think the only ones we are, are doing this year are Tennessee, Kent, or Franklin, Tennessee, Kansas City, Houston, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones for this year. And then we'll start working on some for next year. I know Vegas is one of them for next year. I don't know what else yet. One thing we're going to do is is try to pick up some, um, like, I don't know how to say it, tools or company sponsorships. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say corporate, but that doesn't sound right. Uh -uh. Uh, basically help to offset the cost of these because um, they are costly uh, as far as having stuff there for people to do games food etc so we're trying to figure out how the best way to go about offsetting a little bit of those costs so that's kind of what's so going into some of the planning off something or yeah yeah you know. we're, we're, we're spitballing ideas california we definitely plan on coming to california yeah, man, we like california we love california actually show sure, right mm -hmm. california just costs a lot <laughs> Another question I get a lot there. is where do you sell your woodworking projects? How do you sell them? Where? Mm -hmm. Well, we started just posting them on Facebook. and But the key is having good product photos because if you don't have good photographs, super chat. Thank you, Jay Reeves. <laughs> he says, happy early birthday. Thanks Thank you, for all you do and spreading the good word without wavering. Thank you. <laughs> um, I post them on Facebook, but she is a master at taking good or basically staging, decorating things. And so if you stage those up correctly, oh. make sure you Super get chat. good product photos. Thank you, Robert McAvoy <laughs> says, Matt, thanks Thank uh, for the advice on the Shapeco. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Shapeco 4. I'm finally catching on after a long time of head banging hours. <laughs> it takes a little he bit of He had a lot of yeah. those I too. Did. I did. But Growing it's all pains. Worth it. It's all worth it. Learning pains. Yeah. However you want to say it. That's right. Adjusting pains. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So if you, you know, you, you're looking to sell your woodworking projects, just start telling people they're for sale. That's the main thing, because if you're not telling people, they don't know. And so if that's post them on social media, tell them friends, tell them family. Now, that's one of the best ways just to get started. The one thing you need to focus on is not trying to reach the entire world with your first product. Just find mm -hmm. one customer. You just think about it. Just who's my customer and how can I get this product in front of them? And then go from there. So speaking of that, Tom Shaw has a question. How do you feel about selling on Etsy? I think Etsy is a great platform mm -hmm. once you get rolling. It does take a little bit of time to get things rolling. Um, but there is a process that you have to go through to get that going. I've got an older video. You can just search 731 Woodworks Etsy. And basically kind of goes through the a broad overview of how to set up an Etsy store for success to actually start driving sales. We were generating about... 30000 ish dollars in a 12-month period, all, just revenue, not profit, but revenue off of the Etsy store with mainly stove covers. But that did take some time to get going. It took me like three or four months yeah. to make my first sale, and then it took me a few more weeks later to find another sale. And so I just basically just started researching Etsy uh, like I was trying to learn it. The more uh, variations of a listing that you can add, the better. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, Michael Curse. We wants to know when we will be in Atlanta. Again, we don't have the exact it's in August. day, but it's in August. AWF Fair is that week. And so we'll pick a um, day to do the tools and tailgating around that. Hopefully inside somewhere. It's hot <laughs> in August in Atlanta. They don't call it hot Atlanta for no reason. Not to me. Yeah, it's going to be hot. It's hot. I'm cold when it's 85. Uh, let's see. <laughs> A crafty Yorkshire man <laughs> says, I make up the majority of views on your 731 Etsy video. 
Well, I'm, I'm hoping it helps. <laughs> That's, That's what we're doing. That's what we're Buck here Buck Root said this is his first time for a live chat, but he watches well, all the time. We appreciate you. Glad to have you, Buck. Mia. Let me text her mom. I think she needs to go out. Another question I get asked all the time and, and something I've struggled with myself is how do you get over the fear of, of selling the product or get over the fear of this isn't right. This isn't good enough to sell. Uh, I'm not good enough to do this. Like there, that's real. Like that's real y'all. Because when you start trying to put yourself out there, the first thing you're uh, negativity, whatever you want to call it, it's going to say is you can't do this. You're you, this is, this, this isn't you, you, you're not good enough to make this product or the product you made. Look at that crack right there. Look at that imperfection right there. Like we pick it apart so bad when we create it. But the truth is most people will never see the pro the, the flaw in the product that you're seeing. Everything I've ever built, I can look at and say, oh, man, I wish I had done this a little better, you know, but most people don't see it only if, did you give me a thumbs up? Only if you show them where it's at is when they see it. So uh, try to overcome that the best you can. The best thing to do is just rip the bandaid off and say, I'm doing it. I think I've done something. Oh. Yeah, yeah I did. It's, I said, just to, it, rip the bandaid off and say, I'm selling this. I'm building this. I'm selling it. And then we're going to see what happens from there. And then that's the only way you're going to get over it is just to jump off in it. Um, Big Red, I did not see your comment, so I went back and found it wants to know where did you get the face plate for the DeWalt cordless router on the table that you made for the router? Oh, it's on, it's on Etsy. Uh, Woodgrain Junkie is the store I bought it from. Um, and STL says IWL is August 6th through the 9th. So we'll have to sit down and we'll pick a Saturday before or after there. Yeah. And then I have to get in contact with uh, some people there. It doesn't matter where, but it needs to be a good central location that people can easily get to. Uh, let's see. Mr. Clark said that he moved to large, uh, larger furniture by encouragement of Cam with Blacktail. Yep. Uh, he said, which led up to his first wood cookie sale on eBay. That's awesome. For forty five hundred dollars. You know, and and a lot of that is preference. A lot of it is what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is what area you want to sell in. If skill. you're willing to ship, yeah. you know, skill, all that kind of stuff. I've heard people say they prefer to make small things where the profit margin is lower, but they make more of them. Mm -hmm. And then I've heard people say they'd rather do the bigger projects with a much higher profit margin and do less projects. I think either way, you're still do working really hard. You're still working every day. You're just working on uh, one project for a long time versus a lot of projects in a long time. So um, I think that's just one of those things that you have to figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. I don't think either is wrong. I think other people think one way or the other is wrong because yeah. that's what they're used yeah. to. But whatever works for you works for you. Yep. So. And uh, Randy says, at what point do you figure out a price for each finger to justify a saw stop purchase? Man, that's, that's up to you. But yeah, if you can get one, I mean... It's a whole lot better than walking around all messed up. And like, it's real. I get comments on my saw stop videos that say, I've been woodworking for 40 years or 45 years. I've never once had an accident. All you got to do is pay attention. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. American Patriot says, thanks for being a good role model. <laughs> I can't quite pick up what his picture looks like. I wanna, it's so hard <laughs> to see it. Uh, I'm trying to look at y'all's profile pictures next to your I name. I posted on the... Uh, wait, I can see it better on yours. Oh, okay. I, I posted it. on the community tab before <laughs> the show here asking what others thought was the most asked questions by beginners. Um, a lot of people are one. Uh, Dilly the Real says, I hesitate to make things out of hardwood because it's expensive. How long mm -hmm. does it take you to start making more um, furniture with hardwood instead of softwood if you do? Would you recommend building a project out of softwood first? So a lot of times it just depends on what you're making. But yeah, you can make stuff like end tables with softwood. We've made, I made a bunch of money make out of pine furniture. We still have pine furniture. There's a pine table right there, like literally right there uh, that I made several years ago. Looks great. Still there. However, I could also take hardwood and make that exact same table out of maple, walnut, whatever you want to make it out of. Uh, so it's really not, it's not any different honestly, than using pine versus hardwood. The hardwoods tend to cost a bit more sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now you can charge more of a premium for them, but I had that fear too that I was like, man, I, I don't want to mess up expensive wood. If you're doing stuff out of pine now, 
and softwoods and you're doing a decent job and you think it's nice, just do it, man. It, it's really not, uh, it's not a whole lot of difference. Wood's wood. It cuts very similarly. It joins very similarly. So just, just uh, take a leap on it. Stumpy Nub stopped by and said, saw you on his feed, can't stay, hey. but thought I'd stop in and say a quick hello to you both. Love to see couples working together. Have a good live stream. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate Thanks, you, Jim. man. We haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. We'll, he said he'll be in Atlanta. Awesome. We'll see you there, man. Oh, and Randy Rawls just gifted a 731 membership, and it went to Brian Dole. And it's his birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Brian. And you don't get to pick that. It, yeah, it, it auto picks it. Yep. Auto picks it randomly, so <laughs> that's, that's awesome. pretty cool. Well, happy birthday! Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's cool. Um, let's see. What was another question? Uh, on the community tab, it says uh, a lot of people. He says not me personally because I have tons of tools, but I do hear how do you afford all those tools? Perhaps you could uh, do a little bit of on essential beginner tools and throw in some good starter tools. So I started. A lot of people know. A big, I, I borrowed a circular saw and a couple of drills. And literally everything I sold, I would just take those profits and either buy more material or a different, or I'd save it for another tool. And I've had help along the way. There's no doubt. But beginning, like I needed a miter saw. So I saved up until we could buy a miter saw, finding coupons and deals. Like I'm looking for those things all the time anyway. And I've always done that, but look for a good deal. Uh, but don't put too much pressure on, I've got to have a table saw and a miter saw. All you got to do is you got to have a way to cut the wood and put the wood together. That's it. Now you can do it with a hand saw or you can do it with a circular saw or you can do it with a jigsaw. Like pick the projects for the tools that you have and you can borrow tools, et cetera, to get started. That's what I do. Um, Big Red Farmer, I thought I got your comment. I went back and found it and read it. If you had a different one, maybe I don't know, but he answered the one on the face plate. So if there was a different question or comment, maybe I missed that one. The resin nerd said, what's your take on using pallet woods? I don't have a problem with it. If you're making cool looking stuff, like a lot of people's taking pallet wood and turning it into product, profit, product, profitable product. I mean, just the only thing I wouldn't use them for like food stuff because you don't know what the pallet was, what was transported. It could have been chemicals or poisons going to the farm store, or it could be, you know, maple syrup going to the grocery store. You don't know what was on there. And so I would just, understand that but you can make planters and all kinds of stuff we made some wall art out of some before so you can do all kinds of stuff with it i don't have a problem with it. great grandpa's woodworking gifted a membership and it went to david johnson awesome thank you Welcome. great grandpa i don't think i pushed the button a while ago did you not wall ago wall ago wall ago that's wall country ago. slang it's mm -hmm. like yonder uh let's see Oh, goodness. Steven said late this week he was birthing a neighbor. Oh, little baby cow. Little baby cow. <laughs> He's birthing a little baby cow. A little baby cow. <laughs> <laughs> That's some nasty stuff. <laughs> baby cows are so cute, but <laughs> whew, I've seen some of that. Oh, Vibration NC, feel whew. free. Uh, delete to, I, I don't know if it'll block a link. You can try it. Um, sometimes I don't. I know on my regular channel you can't share links on the comments. So I'm not sure if you can in the chat. If you can, feel free. I don't think you've answered the one about varnish. What about varnish? Saying? Okay. So a crafty Yorkshire man said, Hey, Matt, watching live from the UK. That's cool. What? I currently use stain and varnish to finish stove covers. What are the pros and cons of using Rubio? Monica? Um, I like Rubio, I Rubio. because um, it's easy to use and it dries very fast mm -hmm. and it's very pretty durable as far as anything else goes. I guess is to me as durable as I love polyurethane it. or anything like that. And it's like one and done. Spread it on mm -hmm. and then buff it off and you're done. And we've used it on several things. Uh, coffee tables in our, in our closet. We got like a uh, basically a built-in um, drawers, chest of drawer thing with a walnut top. Super easy. I like that stuff. I think it, it works really well. Hugh McMath said his wife wants a baby Highland cow. <laughs> our uh, niece, when she was little, his brother's daughter, middle daughter, when she was little, wanted Santa Claus to bring her a baby cow so bad. Very bad. Very bad. A big red farmer says, $120, is $120 a good price for an end table made with $30 in wood? It takes me about six hours to make. Um, it sounds a little low, but mm -hmm. it just depends on, um, it just sounds a little low to me. I, it depends on the style and all this stuff, obviously, and if it has drawers, et cetera. But I'm thinking you're, you're about $100 low. That's just random guess. At least, 
Because when you figure in six hours, like that's a decent amount of time to spend on something, right? And so if you're getting paid thirty dollars an hour, I guess what ninety bucks. Thirty six times hours? six. No. Thirty times six is not yeah. ninety. It's one eighty. <laughs> one eighty. I'm sorry. Double that. So that's already one hundred and eighty dollars in labor at thirty dollars <laughs> an hour. If you do twenty dollars an hour, it's a little less than that. But I'm not a mathematician. I just make videos, y'all. Um, but. <laughs> But, our, our daughter's a mathematician. Yeah, our daughter's a, a math I'm a whiz. certified math teacher. I'm but, you know, you, you think about math. that, like how much time, or, you know. Arkansas math. Arkansas Come Arkansas on, math. Greg. If you if you put that much time in at work, if you put in six hours at work, how much are you getting paid per hour? And then you come home and you put that into a product and you spent six hours on it, then you should be able to reap some of that back, right? Maybe it's not $30 an hour. Maybe it's 15 you know, or maybe it's something a little more reasonable, but... You still want to kind of add that into the price of product. Ian Munzel says he's late, but that they made their first stream and they're in Maine. Awesome. We want to go to Maine we so do. bad. We want to get there. We want to go there so bad. Uh, Grant Butler said, what's the trick to getting straight cuts from a job site saw on a 12-foot board I'm ripping <laughs> down? 12 foot by 12 inches by one inch. Well, um, you got to, there's only, if I was doing it, I would have to figure out a way to make sure everything was supported on the in feed and out feed. That may be roller stands or something, because if you can't support it and it's moving on you on a 12 foot board on a small job site saw, it's just going to create havoc. It's just going to wreak havoc. And you've also got to figure out a way to get it pushed against the fence. A feather board will take care of that. Put a feather board on there, get it, you know, going towards getting that pressure toward the fence so it doesn't move away from the fence while you're making the cut. But the main thing is you got to support it on each side of it. Uh, Damon wants to know if I said I was certifiable. I believe that's what she said. Certifiable in math. I did not say certifiable oh. in math. I said I'm certified <laughs> in math. He was asking if I was also certifiable, which is different. <laughs> and he said yes. Hmm. Uh, the rest of the nerd says one plus one equals three. Well, Dixon says when it comes to math, there's three types of people. The ones who know it and the ones who don't. That's terrible. <laughs> Christopher <laughs> Fiorio. I'm sorry, man. Fiorio. <laughs> no? Fiorillo? Fiorillo. That is right. I'm sorry. Christopher Fiorillo. I apologize. I don't even know what that's right. What is the 731 membership? It's it's the 24 Nation. 24 Nation makes up our channel members and Patreon supporters. Uh, they pay a monthly fee uh, or a monthly membership. And then it, with that, they get uh, member-only live streams before this stream. Hey, I got the name right. Yep. And then they also get uh, early access to all my videos they get uh, member-only giveaways every quarter. So the tools you see us on the me review on the channel, we give those away once a quarter mm -hmm. to our channel memberships or for a two before nation and a few other perks still along the way. So. I'm loving the oh, mask. Behind the scenes, Hold we on. do behind the scenes. Jim Spike says five out of four people have trouble with <laughs> fractions. <laughs> We're dying at the mask. That's hilarious. Uh, Mo needs to be on this live yeah. tonight. What are your favorite <laughs> project for new woodworkers? I actually like, well, my very first project that I made as a new woodworker was That's Jay Bates so Outdoor Chair Set. One of the best, best products. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the way Jay put it all together. And he's got a free set of plans, got a build video, and they're easy to make. I made, I literally made it with a circular saw and a drill and a, some two-by-fours. That's it. That's all I had. And I was able to make that. That's a really good product to start with. A lot of people go cutting board and stuff, but that, to do a cutting board right, you got to either get a cutting board kit. Oh, I think we've lost internet. We should be back. Are, Are we, we back? back? We're back. We're back. We're yeah, back. I think we're back. <laughs> so they probably missed a lot of what you just said. All right, so you got to either get a cutting board. If, you, if you're talking about a product, to your first product or a beginner product project, look at Jay Bates Outdoor Chair Set. I'm a fan of that. That's what I made first. Uh, you can make it with a circular saw and a drill. It's super easy to make, and you, all you got to do is follow his instructions. A lot of people think cutting board should be the first, but if you don't have jointers and planers, it's very difficult to do those. And if you haven't noticed, we are having some trouble with our internet tonight. Again. Again. But there we are. Okay. Uh, that's awful. Okay. <laughs> and I knew it because Greg said, oh, no. Oh, no. In all caps, and that's oh, no. how I knew to look. Oh, so. No. Thank you, Greg. So if the internet drops, somebody just type in, oh, no. Yeah. And that way I can see it. <laughs> if if you're interested in growing a woodworking business, if you're just starting out or you don't know your way, we spent seven and a half years trying to figure it out, right? 
Like we went through trial and error trying to figure out how to price stuff, where to sell it, how to sell it, how to set up an Etsy store. And there's no to, perfect method no, for the stuff. There's not. However, we put everything we learn into our own online course and community. Mm -hmm. It's called Sawdust Startups. Go to sawdoststartups.com. I want to show you a little bit of behind the scenes. I don't know that I've showed this on the live stream yet, uh, but this is basically the community is here. Once you get in there, this is where everybody interacts. Like we got 173 members right now, all like-minded people trying to grow a woodworking business, all working together. It's like a big mastermind of everybody working together. It's absolutely amazing to see this inside there. And then we have the classroom. There's 17 hours of classroom or courses in here on how to start a business, how to grow Instagram, how to grow YouTube, everything we've learned along the way. We've dumped into this, how to grow uh, Etsy 101, Etsy 101 Part 2, Facebook Marketplace. Like there's so much in here. We spent a bunch of time putting all this together. And uh, so far, we're seeing really, really good results from those that are in the course community and growing their business from nothing or those that have already started and they're using this to help launch them a little further along. So if you're interested, go to sawdoststartups.com. There you go. In the, uh, MN Rustic, the course is I love Sawdust Startups. I, I like that um, you guys get together on phone calls. Yep. Oh, we do group coaching. Yep. Every uh, so, We're going to do weekly starting right, listen next week. And uh, that way everybody gets their questions answered. Uh, it's me and my partner, Nick. We do a group coaching call once a week. Get those questions answered live. Or that you can watch the replay if you can't make the live. It's really good. So, Stefan, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but I'm going to say Stefan. says... Uh, I'm going to start a woodworking business at 18. Nice. Any advice? Um, start now. Why are you waiting to 18? I mean, if you got parents' approval, you know, make sure you're being safe. But there's no reason to wait to 18 that I can think of, unless you just don't have time. Maybe school's coming first. That's a good idea. Uh, but, yeah, start trying to figure out what products you want to make. Start doing research on um, customers and things like that. I would start reading business books if you don't have any. Um Business Made Simple, Marketing Made Simple is two good books. Start With Why is a really good book. Dream Big, Bob Goff, you got to read that one. Uh, so that's what I would start doing is just trying to research business, like figure out business because business is business. doesn't matter if it's a woodworking business or you're selling T-shirts. I see all of y'all's comments, but he is not stopping to well, talk long enough. I was answering a question. Do you know what time it was? Oh, it was power tip time. Whew. I'm on a roll, y'all. You got power tip? Pay attention to math class, kids. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, <laughs> we just straight up skipped uh, up our tip. Time. I apologize. That was terrible. He just would not quit talking. I was waiting. Well, the power tip is if you want to start a woodworker business, build something and try to sell it. Like, don't try to overthink it. Don't try to overcomplicate it. Figure out, like, what am I going to sell? Um, what product will sell in my area? South Arkansas, what sells down here? Outdoor furniture. Why? People like sitting around outside. Uh, that's just what. South really is what Southern people do. I don't know why. Sit outside and swat a fly. That's just what they do. <laughs> but you know it's true. So <laughs> it really is true. J Bay's outdoor chair set. They're just they're free plans. Go take you forty fifty dollars to make it. If that, probably not even that. A couple few two befores. Make a chair. Post it for sale. Try to sell it. You just started a business. And don't be scared of somebody not liking what you have. Yeah. There's going to be haters out there for everything yep. in the world. So don't be scared of that because for every one person that will hate on something you've built, 10 others may love it. Okay. So don't be scared to make something just because you think someone may not like it. Yeah. You may not even see all of the beauty in it, whereas someone else may see all of it. That's you right. Know? So don't be scared of that. And listen, nobody gets, nobody starts off in anything good at it, right? <laughs> we get better as we try. Mm -hmm. And case in point, tonight's Sawdust a, a Spotlight goes out to Mr. Ryan Felthouse, and she saw this earlier in the week. This is a cutting board. Do you think he started making those? I guarantee you he didn't. When I saw that, I was like, holy Look at that Toledo. inlay. Look that at this. That is beautiful. That it's is a gorgeous. beautiful, beautiful piece. Y'all make some amazing things That's that absolutely you post fantastic. in that community. This fantastic. is one of them. If you don't know, we got a Facebook group. It's called... 731 Woodworks. Go to facebook.com slash group slash 731 Woodworks. Nice community there. Um, just answer the two questions or you can't get in. Be it's nice. It's 731 Community. Yeah. Uh, you'll see it there. Uh, but that's where that was posted at. And he didn't start making, he didn't just wake up one day and build that and never done woodworking before. You had to work your way there. And the only way to get there is to start. You just got to rip the Band-Aid off and get started. 
Big Red, I would seriously consider creating a Facebook um, for your business. You can just start it out as a business page and post your things there because Facebook has so much potential to get your product in front of someone's face. People scroll on social media mm -hmm. all the time. So it's a really good place to get started. Um, you may have to just sell locally. So go to Facebook Marketplace, but they have so many ways that you can narrow it in there and you can pick the location of where your product is going to be advertised. That way pe only people in your area will see that particular thing but then you could also um you could also talk to family and see if family would be willing to put it on their facebook mm -hmm. and friends, say sir. you know or friends and say hey look i've got somebody that knows how to build this if you're interested give them a call at or whatever it is but free word of mouth is the best thing that you can do and facebook is a really good place to to do that yep 80 mm -hmm. hours on that board. Yeah, it's it looks... <laughs> uh, at least. Like, I can't even... Of course, I don't know how to do that kind of stuff, but I'm looking at the way all the boards are put together. I'm like, Yeah, it's how? intricate. That's an end grain, and, too. And honestly, I, it looks perfect. Yeah. I guarantee you, he could point out flaws in it. I, I promise you. I can't see a single one. And we're all sitting there in awe of it and Googling yeah. over it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um... Speedy wants to know, I'm trying to repair a play kitchen for my sister's kid. I'm kind of stuck on the oven door panel that needs a recess for the plexiglass window. I have a router, but no edge guide. Any ideas? Alternate you, yeah, ideas. Yeah, clamp a board. I would just clamp boards down where you need that um, for the router edge to be uh, the distance away. Set your router up there. Put the board on there. Clamp it down. Boom. Edge guide. Damon said that would be his Mr. Holland's opus. <laughs> it is super nice. Don Mordecai says. Philippe says, been working on a desk. I want to get that Rubio Monaco finished, but would like to find something more affordable. Any recommendations? Um, I don't know offhand of anything uh, that... There was one. Well, there's Osmo, but they're, they're priced similarly. If you just search hard wax oil, that's what it is. It's just a hard wax oil. You might could find something that's a little more budget friendly. Um, C. Carson says, I built for friends and family and tell them it's free to them if they can sell one to someone else from me. Idea. I've never heard somebody say I that. Like that. That's a really good incentive yeah. to get that word of mouth out there. I'm telling you, social media, I know some people hate social media and they, they reject the idea of using it because of certain things that can happen with it. But social media is a platform that's used so much that it it doesn't make sense not to use it sometimes at least for your business you don't yeah, have to put your that, personal info in I mean. there you look well i actually think you have to for facebook you have to have a personal account and then you create a business account on top of that a bi uh, business page yeah but i mean you could just go yeah. like a facebook page yeah it's just why not why not use something that's so widely used already you can't buy a billboard or rent a billboard and get out in front of as many people as you can if you use social media and you're paying for the billboard. Mm -hmm. Social media is usually free. So there you go. Uh, Villa Manu and um, Campfire Woodworks both recommend rustic lumber, has a good hard wax for a fraction of the price. Oh. So uh, thank y'all. Uh, go check out if you're still looking good for deal. a better alternative or a cheaper alternative to uh, Rubio, check out, just search rustic lumber hard wax. You should be able to find it. Damon Barber wants to know, can you recommend a good board butter? I can. Outlaw's board butter. I wish I had a can to show you. Made specifically by me. She makes every can of it. She <laughs> made a whole batch last night. I think she was up to like 8.30 last night yeah. making board butter. So, yeah. Just fresh batch, ready to roll. Face, uh, go to 731boardworks.com. Or you can get it at faithvalleytools.com and check out some of our other products there. We got some uh, a new tool company, faithvalleytools.com. You may have seen that URL popping up here or there. Uh, but this uh, this is our new tool company, and 10% of the profits go to support Christian Missions. So mm -hmm. it's for a really good cause. We've already been able to support two different mission trips already in the in the first month that we've had this open. Uh, yep. So this, this if you go there, 10% of those profits, anything you you see there, will be going to Christian Missions. Mm -hmm. um, we we just it's been a blessing, and we're we're so thrilled to uh, be able to uh, just use that as a platform to share the get, get gospel. So it's awesome. Um, so let's see, where was it? Oh, I wanted to read this. Marvin Huddleston said, I hate social media, but <laughs> don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Yeah, that's true. 
That is true. So I thought that was a good way of putting it. I don't, I, I really don't like uh, using, Facebook is the only thing I like to use, honestly. Um, and I'm really bad about not uploading things to Instagram. And he gets on to me about that all the time. <laughs> and I never upload to YouTube anymore, really. Facebook is just where I'm comfortable at. Yeah, and, and that's okay. Because I like YouTube. And while I do post on Instagram stuff, I spend the majority of my time on YouTube because I like that platform. But there's others. I, th I know a guy. He has a YouTube channel, but he has almost. I think he's closing in on a million followers on Instagram. He's been posting for years and years and years. But he does everything on Instagram: stories and reels and posts. Like the dude is on Instagram all the time, posting about tools. And then his YouTube channel is just kind of over there. But he's killing it on Instagram. Focus on one. If you're starting social media and you're like, I need to get something going, or I want to get something going. Focus on one. Don't try to do them all at one time because what's going to happen is you're trying to do YouTube, you're trying to do Instagram, you're trying to do Facebook. It becomes overwhelming. By yourself, even if you're posting the same thing, that's 15, 20 minutes you're trying to tap all the stuff out. Like it, it gets overwhelming. Just pick one and go all in on that one. STL, that was burning the midnight oil for, for me. Sure was. <laughs> I was tired. Sure Stephen Lippo, I don't know if that's really the name of something, but I hope it is because that's <laughs> awesome. Puppy butt board butter. That's awesome. Spencer Musgrave says, do, I love it. did you guys ever do small festival events? We yes, we do. We've got some coming up. It's called Tools and Tailgates. All you got to do yep. is go to 731 slash tools and tailgates. And these are our current tour dates, I guess you would call them. Uh, first one's coming up in two weeks in Franklin, Tennessee. You can RSVP right there. We're going to have food, fun, prizes, giving away tools, gift cards. We're going to have some axe throwing. But mainly, we just want to fellowship yep. and meet people and just give back with the gifts and prizes that we have for you. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's a good way to end it. I think so. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Thank you all. We appreciate you. Good night, y'all. Y'all have a good night.